Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to do a channeling, but with a topic purpose. The topic may be of great interest to you. It may be something that affects many of you, and that is working on, I don't even know how to describe this, you guys. It's This is tough to do because I have tried to rec start recording this a couple of times and I just can't, it's, there's a lot on my mind personally. The topic is dealing with someone who has memory issues, whether that be Alzheimer's, dementia, aging of the mind, or some other medical situation where your loved one, your friend, isn't like they used to be. And it's like this slow deterioration of memory and it seems so awful, like just cruel, like you're being robbed slowly of your memories, which are, as our human experience shows, very, very precious to us, aren't they? Your memories, they're precious to you. And in our personal life, we've been dealing with that. Um, moved someone into uh, assisted living a few years ago and now into a memory care because the memory, the mind, the, the brain simply shrinks. It gets smaller. It, it, it doesn't work like it used to, just like the body. You know, it's slowly ending its time here. You know, it's running out of, of that juice, you know, to, to keep it To keep it going and so I know many of you can relate to this now the reason why I'm talking to the, uh, talking to this topic of memory loss and working with people or family or friends who have memory loss issues is because it totally helps to connect and relate on a soul level yes you can connect to that loved one even if they don't remember who you are even if you it's frustrating for you or hard for you because the, the person's personality changes or can change quickly and have confusion about days and nights and you might get phone calls in the middle of the night, had that experience, and where you have to talk to them about what time of day it is and that, no, it's nighttime, you can go to sleep now and just really confusion and then sometimes really frustration like someone who's so nice and kind changes into someone who's angry and mean and bitter because there's this frustration that comes from confusion and and then it's it's just fear and sadness all mixed together you guys wow i've been dealing with this so much this weekend when we moved um, our loved one to the memory care um section of of Wow, there's just a lot, you guys. And so I know many of you have aging parents or grandparents or family members that are in this situation, so hopefully you can relate. Let's talk about this productively and give you some, some support. You can, here's your hope, you guys. You can communicate and connect with those loved ones even when their memory isn't accurate or on, on target. You, you can communicate with their soul, their higher self. So you have a soul, a higher self. You know, I talk about this all the time. Your spirit, your intuition, your higher self is like your guide to yourself, which is your spirit, your soul's voice, your intuition. Everybody has that. You have it, I have it, everybody has it, everybody has it. And so that is the way you can channel and communicate and connect with others, even if you can't face to face or can't relate to them in a human context or what, what it may be if there's, you know, things that you, just barriers to communication, you can connect and communicate with them through your spirit, through channeling the energy of your spirit to their spirit. You can communicate with their spirit. You can channel their higher self. You can find out what that loved one needs, wants, what their, um, what their comfort is, what would make them most comfortable by channeling them. This also works when people are in a coma, when people are in and out of conscious awareness because they have a lot of medication, like maybe morphine, like in a hospital, you know, after a serious accident or something, when they're in and out of consciousness, this also works then because they're really moving in between realities. They're really moving in between human state and spirit state, human state and spirit state. 
or when they're in, under anesthesia. I have a great story about that I should share. You can also connect, communicate with them then. So if someone's in surgery and you're worried about them, even if the surgery is like super long or super short, it doesn't matter. You could literally connect with them. And how you do it is kind of through a meditation state. You have a conversation. You can have a conversation in your mind. You can do an actual meditation to connect with them. And there are so many options in regards to how to do that. But you have to utilize your mind and your thoughts, your thinking mind, and your soul. So your human mind and your soul, so your spirit, are working together to help this bridge happen. Okay, and then you can start to key in, tap into your own intuition, which is your spirit, your higher self, that can read the energy of that person. You're reading their aura, the energy around them. You're reading some of the information. It's not just body clues, like nonverbals, but or facial expressions, but you can feel and sense the shift and change in the energy, and you can start to tell where they're at. What reality are they living in? Are they in this timeline? Are they in this timeline? Line. It takes a little practice, but especially when you know this person or you've known them your life, you can do it. And I know because I have myself personally. So I know I know. I said we're going to channel because we are. So I was trying to think about who would I ask about this who's experienced it in the afterlife? And who do you think I came up with? I actually didn't come up with anybody. I had, I had actually a thought in my mind. I thought, I don't know if that's exactly a great person to ask, but I could. But I, we are going to ask Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if you've watched Above Life Channel, y'all know that I am, uh, I try to be very nonpartisan <laughs> with my channels. But as a person, you totally know how I fall on that political spectrum. So this isn't a political. <laughs> it's kind of hard right now because the climate in America is like very political, but it's not. Talking to Ronald Reagan, it was actually my husband's idea. And I said, oh my gosh, you're right, because Ronald Reagan, the former president and actor, Hollywood and politics, oh my gosh, my two favorite things. No, no, politics really isn't my favorite thing. It's just part of my upbringing, let's say that. And so uh, nostalgic a little bit for that. Two things coming together, woo! And so Ronald Reagan, and I thought, oh my gosh, he's right, because Ronald Reagan struggled with Alzheimer's. And I don't know how public that was. I think people knew that, but I'm not sure how um, transparent that was. So let's talk with Ronald Reagan about this topic from somebody who knows what it was like to be on that end of that and then who is in the afterlife. So we'll channel with him. But again, I want to be really, 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 really clear. I should do more videos about this actually where you can communicate and connect with your loved one even if they are here in this life. They're not after, they're here. But their mind is so in a state of like flow and flex where it's shifting and changing and it is they are actually able to be in multiple places at once and multiple timelines at once thus the confusion when they're back in alignment in this timeline in their body that you know them as so they might refer to stuff back in their childhood like it was yesterday or even mention things that are like like they talk to their husband who ha has been dead for you know 10 years or that kind of a thing and they're not making it up you guys they're able to access that stuff they're totally able to so it's fascinating and it's also incredibly infuriating and frustrating for those of us who care for people who are loved ones that we want to have time with them and we want them to have the best quality of life in this timeline but they're really flexing and flowing and fluid and able to connect with all sorts of timelines which makes things very confusing and in also dealing with other issues of especially if it's a situation where they're aging body issues and health issues and mobility issues and, and eating issues and everything like that just compounds this, right? But there is a, I have to believe you guys, I have to believe that there's a method to this, a purpose for this. So let's talk to Ronald Reagan in the afterlife and find out. Political stuff aside, all right? Because he is knowledgeable about this. So let's chat with him. And if he's willing to talk to me, we know he's open, <laughs> okay? All right. 
Oh, oh, it Nancy sees with him. Ronald Reagan and his beautiful wife, Nancy Reagan. Because he is saying that, my beautiful wife, Nancy. He says, first of all, I would like to say that Hollywood definitely trains you to be a politician. And then he laughs. <laughs> He's very charming. He, Mr. Reagan, you are very charming. He says, well, thank you, my dear. Thank you very much. And he has this great smile, you guys. And his wife is so cute and she's right by his side. And again, politics aside, politics aside, the two of you, we are open hearted and open minded to, we really want to find out the viewers here at Above Life Channel, what, give us some insight, please. I should have brought my tissues because <laughs> I could use some too. As a human, like help us to understand. I, I, I know that you had some memory, some struggles with your memory, Mr. Reagan. And um, it would be lovely if you could share with us in context of what that's like from the person who is suffering that. Is that true? And also, also, um, if you could clarify, did you have a dementia or an Alzheimer's or, or what, to what extent, if you're comfortable in sharing that? Oh yes, he says, it's, it's a public record. It's public record. Um, I was deeply affected by Alzheimer's. It's a, a different type of memory disease than dementia. They are different. He says there's actually different ranges. He's showing me like a spectrum of Alzheimer's and it's not stages that he's clarifying, just to be clear, he's saying ranges. And so that seems different because stages seems like first stage, second, like it advances. And he says, that's not always the case. There's different types and varieties of Alzheimer's and it affects, it shows up and it progresses at different rates, which are the stages. He says, the levels of progression are the stages that you, you see, he says, because he's noticing that I see it in my mind and I see these different colors. And there's like these, it's like four or six, Maybe it's seven stages, four, and then six and seven stages of Alzheimer's. Oh, maybe he just went to four because it feels like four and there's more. All right. And so you have a unique perspective because of your public persona. He says, I don't know about that. I think more for my family, it may have seemed as though they needed to maintain publicly a higher degree of, of privacy. But it's not something that anyone ever should be ashamed of. It's simply uh, the progress of life. And life progresses for all of us, and at times uniquely, a bit different with some, some crossover, he says, some, common, some commonality. It's important to not vilify the person or even the disease. I know it's easy to do that. And, and I know, he says, I know, Bridget, it's hard for you, in fact, to understand that. But it, there is a scientific portion of this. There is a scientific piece of this that loved ones, family, friends can, can research and find out. There's an incredible, he's saying like um, the American Alzheimer's Association or something. AMAA or something, he's saying that there's resources online, there's, there is a tremendous support community. If you are one that needs to have others to be able to, um, if you are doing it on your own, if you are the sole caregiver for someone who is, is struggling with their memory, he says, and then he kind of smiles and looks up at me and says, conscious mind, if they are struggling with that. Like he's trying to like meet me where I'm at. That is so polite, thank you. Gosh, he is charming. He's very charming and informative. Thank you for that. So there is resources online. He's showing me like, um, like to me, it looks like a Facebook thing, you know, like where you could a Facebook community or group where you can get support as caregivers. Okay, you guys, as caregivers to help understand the process and get support to each other, for each other and that kind of thing. He says there's, there's community, there's community. It looks like on Facebook, you guys. So we can look that up and see and all right, so
so your family, so, and he's saying, it's not that there's a, a want to hide, that this disease strips you of your integrity. It does not. He says, it does not. It does not. It's a state of mind. It is not understood by others and publicly it could be ridiculed or criticized for someone who is a public figure. Shattering that image is something that really impacts the family a great deal, much more, much more than the, than the person. It may appear that we, as, as, as I can speak for myself going through this process, I could see or sense how it affected my family. And that's what angered me. That's what would frustrate me or cause me to be sad. He says, I was highly emotional at times. And he's showing me very weepy and cry, crying. And it was because I, it was part of the effects for me, the in and out that you, you described in your, in your introduction. The in and out would create emotion within me. And then there would be a, a display of that, which I feel that Nancy was much better equipped to manage that than my children. And I feel like he has a son. Does he have two boys and a girl? I feel like I can see three people that are related to him and I'm not sure how that is. You guys, I don't even remember. I can't remember right now. I'm in like altered state when I'm channeling, I don't know. Um, he's saying the child, the kids that it's, it was harder for them to handle that to understand that what was happening and he says i could see that and he says but nancy he looks at his wife oh gosh you guys he's so sweet with her he loves her he loves her and he says but nancy was always the strong one she was always the one with the strength she always kept it together very very much like a, a woman of high class and standards and morality. A, an excellent example. And I'm, okay, all right, okay. All right, I have to cough right now, just a minute. <coughs> okay. So, how long, because I can see you in a wheelchair, so how long did the, like, the memory, when did the memory thing start? When did you kind of notice? He says, I had, I have Alzheimer's. That's what I was diagnosed with. And he says, I have Alzheimer's. That's what I had experienced, what I experienced, he says, I experienced. So he's, okay, he says, I have. He's using present tense, interesting. Um, but, He's saying there were, there were signs. He says there were signs. I knew that there was something that was not well with my memory, with my mind, my, my cognitive thinking. There were, there were um, he's saying there were breakdowns. There were moments where I could not remember things. And it was like an episode, sort of, sort of like a, he's describing, he says it was an episode, my episodes. And he's saying that happened much earlier than people may want to believe. But I knew. Okay, so you can get tested for like a gene or something, I think. I think you can do that nowadays. Was that in effect then? No, he says, no, my father had problems with, I think he said his father. 
someone in his family on his side, it could either be a father or a brother that had problems like that too with their memory. They had problems like that. Um, brain issues, let's all say brain issues. But back, he says, he says back in, he's saying the 90s, it wasn't, the Alzheimer's wasn't what it is now. There's so much resource and so much information about it. Better understanding, he said, then it was much more of something that you, that wasn't commonly known or understood and it appeared that someone would be um, losing their mind or going crazy. Now you have to, he doesn't say going crazy, he says losing their mind. And that is something that we had to guard against in order to maintain, and then Nancy just says, in order to maintain, oh boy, okay, she says like his iconic status. His, his unblemished reputa reputation. We would not allow for others to intervene or intercept any kind of real knowledge that uh, Ron had, had been struggling with his memory, his mind. So was this happening when you were in office? He, it looks like right after he left, it looks like there are periods of time where he would kind of get more relaxed and laid back even on the podium, like even when he's responding to doing a talk or having doing questions or something. And I feel like this was after he left office. I feel like it was after he left office, more relaxed and more kind of funny. And some of that he says, like he's showing me um, using humor to diffuse the memory loss situation and that kind of a thing. And kind of blaming it on, you know, the presidency and, you know, taking everything out of you, taking your entire brain, you know, taking everything out of your mind, you know. And now life is not like that and that kind of a thing. So the time after the presidency is when it feels like it was more obvious. It could have been more obvious, but it looks like, I don't want to be like um, super specific or picky about this, but I, I'm wondering, if you would answer, is during office at the end, during the end of your term, did you? I almost, you guys, I, I feel like it's disrespectful. <laughs> to ask him that. I, I apologize for asking that. If it's something that you feel that is beneficial for people to know, then, then you may answer, but I don't, I'm not gonna push this. He just kind of smiled and Nancy would appreciate it if I would not ask that. Nancy asked me. I will respect your wishes 100%, mm -hmm. because that's how we roll at Above Life Channel. We are not about the drama, we're about the people and the connection and giving people hope. So let's talk about that, let's talk about hope. Um, Mr. President, Mr. Reagan, how did it feel for you? Can you give us some insight into that and then maybe some recommendations either from you or Nancy how to, how to handle that for ourselves when we're watching our loved one or our friends deal with this situation? It, it's, he says, the confusion is, is real. It's very disruptive. It's very disorienting. It's like when you wake up from a very long sleep and you're not quite sure for a moment where you are at. If you, if you uh, say travel a lot, as we did in the, in the presidency, you wake up and wonder what city you're in. Remind me again what day it is. And, but it doesn't lift. The fog of that doesn't lift. You can't just brush it off. It is sort of a, it is a bit of a fog, fogginess is how I would relay that to you. So uh, on a day when the sun is shining and the air is bright, you know, it, the air is, um, the sun is shining and it's bright, the air is fresh and your mood can be uplifted and then other days when it's cloudy or when it's rained for several days, you can get rather tired of it. When the pattern consistently, or the pattern repeats consistently, 
that's the only part of the confusion that is reliable, is consistent, and it comes back. And over time, for me, it changed. I didn't recognize others in a way that I once had. So you had, in your Alzheimer's journey, you, had, you got to the point where you didn't recognize your loved ones at times. I, and I know, he says, and he looks at Nancy, he says, I know that was the most painful for them. And then he says, Nan, what, what type of advice would you give to to family. He says that to her. He just looked to her and he says that to her. She's quite a bit shorter than he is. And I don't remember that, but he's like this bigger guy and she's like, you know, here. And she says, have faith. Everyone deals with this differently. It affects us differently. That's true. That's very true. Try not to be so hard on yourself. I know, I know we want what's best for them, don't we? We really want them to be happy. And it's so sad. It's, it is a bit like grieving the life that you had, the memories that are lost. Keep your spirits up. Keep your faith. And she's referring to God and having trust in God. And knowing that this time is a time for you as a family to get closer. There are some members of your family that will not be able to manage this, that will have a very difficult time being present for this process. And even if they are far, far away it is important to stay in contact with them, update them, communicate with them. Even if they are not able to come because they feel heartbroken, they will be torn with guilt at times and, and long, long after the transition has been made, long after your death, they will they will still try to come to terms with the guilt of not visiting or not being able to handle things better. Being, not being patient is, is definitely something that caregivers share. We feel a tremendous amount of responsibility. We expect ourselves to be patient and kind at all times and not to get frustrated with our, our person who doesn't remember us or who gets frustrated or angry at us. We have to learn to forgive easily and perhaps that is one of the greatest lessons here or messages that you were seeking is the forgiveness. To forgive quickly and move right back into love. That includes yourself, not just your person, not just the one who is dealing with this. Because you all are and as a family, it has the opportunity to bring you together, although it may tear you apart as well inside. But don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. Just share, share what you can and cherish those moments together. That's what will carry you through beyond long, long after the disease is gone and your loved one is no longer suffering. That will carry you forward. Those were some very wise words. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you, Mr. Reagan, as well, for your insight into this experience with memory loss and what it's like to actually be the person that's going through that as well. Very interesting. When Nancy shared that the message or the lesson was forgiveness, to forgive quickly and then love again. Wow. 
in that kind of condensed timeline, that makes a lot of sense to just forgive, to forgive yourself, to let go of extra responsibility or accountability and to face things as it comes moment to moment to moment instead of worrying or anticipating or dwelling on the painful moments that you have, focus on the positive moments and the moments of connection, the truest connection. So my recommendation is that you can, and I know you can, you don't just have to be psychic to do this, you can connect with that person's spirit and you can always be together in an alignment in spirit, even if they don't recognize your face, even if they're upset or they're even nonverbal, it doesn't matter what stage of the, their life or transition that they are in, you can still communicate and connect with their higher self. You can connect and communicate soul to soul. Yes, you can. And I know because I've done it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have had many client sessions where people have been in this situation where they have a dad that has Alzheimer's or they have a, a mom that has dementia, deals with dementia, or just an, simply an aging parent that has so many memory issues and health issues and, and medication created memory problems because there is that too where we've had conversation and connect with the higher self of that person to get that, that clarity. And you can do that using your own intuition. So, wow, this was a powerful session. Thank you very much to the two of you, the Reagans, for being here for our conversation today. I do need to talk to you again at some point. I think that would be very interesting to do another you know, about the presidential stuff. We'll have to talk about that at some point, right? He says, my pleasure, my pleasure. And we probably should talk about the Hollywood stuff with him because that would be kind of fun too, wouldn't it, you guys? Yes. <laughs> thank you both for being here. And thank you. Thank you for watching today. I hope that your spirit has been a bit more inspired as a result of this conversation today. I hope that your hope cup has been a little more filled up because of watching this channeling video. And remember, the purpose of life is for you to live it. Just live it. You're doing the best you can, and I believe in you. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>